Hello and welcome to a special studio edition of Europe and You. From Cumbria to Cornwall, Gloucestershire to Glasgow, flooding has wreaked havoc on our local communities in recent years. It's caused billions of pounds worth of damage and misery for many. So is enough being done to protect our homes and businesses for the future? And do we have something to learn from elsewhere in Europe? Well, here to discuss this is Jacqueline McGlade from the European Environment Agency. It's recently published a comprehensive report on environmental issues, including flooding. And Julie Gerling is a Conservative MEP for the southwest of England, a region all too familiar with this kind of problem. Jacqueline McGlade, just how big is this problem in the UK and is it getting worse? Well, in the UK, I think we've seen an uprise, not only in the cost of flooding, but also the extensive nature to which people are exposed to flooding, even small events. So I would say that we've had a past where we've been relatively lucky. And compared to Europe, I think that uh, the UK is on its way to having a lot more serious events, just as we saw in the Southwest quite, quite recently. Julie, you've had personal experience of flooding. Just explain what happened to you firsthand. Well, uh, I had a fairly, um, unfortunately, quite typical experience of being stuck in um, what I've learned to call a pluvial event. Um, it was uh, in Somerset and it was after the Bath and West show. And we, there was a massive downpour onto already quite wet and waterlogged ground, really, a, you know, sort of monsoon proportions. Just as the show was turning out at the end of the day, the police had to close the A37 and we were diverted off of that, having spent ages getting out of the showground through the mud. And driving on a small country road, um, there was a dip in the road, uh, which, was, which was, had water in it, but visibly it looked like a, 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 big, pus, a big puddle. So we, we continued on down through this puddle, just at the point that we got to the dip in the road, the, there was a massive, I can only describe as a mudslide, came down into the dip where there was a gateway from the field and effectively the, the, the water level in, in the dip increased by about a metre and a half in literally five seconds. So suddenly car stuck in and we're having to bail out of the car which is then there up to its windows. So, and ended up, it was a, an expensive car my husband had just got and it was written off. So, and how stupid is that? I mean, I should have known better because in 2007, the year before, I went through the Gloucestershire floods. So I knew you shouldn't drive into puddles, but literally when we saw it, it was only a small puddle. That was how quickly it happened. So yes, I have some pretty um, close experience of it myself. I mean, Jacqueline, it sounds like Julie was very lucky not to be hurt in that incident. What needs to be done? What action needs to be taken to prevent incidents like that? Well, I think the sad truth is that flooding is part of the new uncertainty that we're all going to be living in. And the UK, given its position, will actually experience more uncertainties around weather than perhaps other parts of Central and, and uh, rest of Europe. And I think that's a very, very important message because when we hear the emergency services talking about weather warnings, there tends to be a session of, do I need, oh, no, I'll just ignore it, I'll be careful. But I think more and more the emergency services are realizing that our infrastructure, the way in which we've dealt with things in the past, is probably not longer, no longer fit for purpose. Now, you head um, the European Environment Agency. You've recently come out with, with, with this report, very detailed, looking at country comparisons, mm -hmm. all kinds of, of information in there. But one of the things that comes out or springs out from the report is it's the kind of projections you've done for the future. It looks like it's going to be a costly business dealing with flooding. I think that's really the point. And but we certainly can't afford to ignore it. But on the other hand, we need to be very careful that we don't invest in hard structures. I mean, flooding is a very good example where nature has a natural way of dealing with water if we would only give it room to do that. And one really strong message is, and it has been said by the Environment Agency in England and Wales for a long time, do not build in the floodplain. You're just asking for trouble. So I think really we can avoid huge costs by being more clear that we shouldn't build very, very densely into the floodplain and we should try to adopt a more soft approach to engineering to absorb the extra water that sort of comes in these big bursts of rain. And Julie, you recently in the European Parliament came up and suggested an idea that actually wouldn't cost a lot of money, actually an idea to, to share know-how really across Europe. 
Yes, um, this was really based on the experience that I had. Before I became an MEP in 2009, I, I was um, a councillor in Gloucestershire. And we had floods in 2007, and uh, I think well known um, across the UK, because one particular piece of infrastructure went out, that was the water supply. Um, the electricity nearly went, and it was prevented by Herculean um, actions by, and expensive actions by emergency services, but the water supply did go, and, and, and therefore it became a national event. But what happened then was I came to the Parliament here to talk about funding support, and in the process met um, people in my position from other regions in Europe and the one that sticks in my mind most was meeting the um, environment minister for Carinthia which is a southern Austrian province and Carinthia is so, it has very high mountains but an awful lot of foothills so very similar in many ways to some of the areas in Gloucestershire, the Cotswolds particularly, the hills in the Forest of Dean. And what they were talking about was an experience uh, which was centuries old of dealing with flood water because they have an annual melt. So the sort of deluge we had in Gloucestershire which came from rain falling unexpectedly and persistently, they knew about because when the snow melts, boy does it come down the mountains. So they had all kinds of quite interesting ideas about how you can hold water back for a while. You don't, you don't have to build massively expensive reservoirs, there's just some landscape changes that create places where the water will linger a little longer on the hillside, maybe just for 24 hours is enough, just to let the drains be able to flow through to the rivers down on, on the valleys. And that really wasn't um, expensive to, to talk to them about it and most of the schemes they had were quite reasonable and they are in fact ideas that are being taken up in the UK. But my, my thought was really that we could do a little bit more of that, a little bit more of sharing that experience because whilst it's a pretty fairly new weather events in the UK. I mean, people will go back to the 50s and talk about flooding, but these, these very flash flooding, nowhere near rivers incidents are much more common now and they, we, we believe that they're going to continue. So good to learn from places that have dealt with that and know how to deal with it and integrate it into their planning system and understand a little bit about mitigation because you can't necessarily prevent but you can mitigate quite a lot and that's really what I'm interested in learning from my European colleagues here. Jacqueline you were nodding quite a lot mm. through that it looks like something you would agree with. Um, what do you make of that idea of having a network after all it's going to be the politicians who are going to have to kind of force these things onto the agenda I suppose? Well I think I'm really fortunate in the sense that the agency, agency is supported by just such a network including the protection agencies and we are at pains and in fact in the report that's just come out there is a large section on countries where they look at what they're doing well they also admit to what they're not doing so well but there's an exchange of best practice and that is really alive and well and these are people who meet each other regularly talk to each other and this will be essential with climate change because exactly as Julia said, what someone has experienced over four or five hundred years, other parts will also experience now. And the counter side to flooding is droughts. We have droughts in the UK. People don't realize this. So again, understanding how some of our southern Mediterranean countries have been dealing with droughts, really important. Use of vegetation, forestry, forestry in different places, strategic uh, changes to the landscape being more strict about what kind of agriculture we do is also important. So there are lessons to be learnt, but I can't avoid but say that in the end the projections we put forward suggest that Europe will be a world of extremes, it will not be business as usual. And do you think that the, that the United Kingdom also has something to, to offer in this sort of networking idea? I mean, you were involved with flood mapping mm. in, in the UK. Is that something we can take to other countries, do you think? I think the um, Environment Agency in England, Wales, again, did try and made a very good effort um, in the early part of this decade to put on a map the risk of flooding, really to raise awareness about the, the challenges that faced us. And that's certainly something that a uh, few other countries in Europe have done, but which I do believe will be more important as the kind of urban sprawl starts to take over other parts of Europe. So here in Brussels, for example, it would be very interesting to do a flood risk map. 
Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for this edition of Europe and You. Thanks ever so much, both of you, for joining us. Yes, thank you. And do join us again for the next edition of Europe and You. Goodbye. Goodbye.